All right, all right, all righty, all right. What is going on, everybody? My name is Pete, but you probably already knew that. But in case you didn't, you guys are watching the one and only Paid to Drive and Paid to Drive Logs, day number 1,154, coming at you. If you are a delivery driver for apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, or any of the others, you should definitely be subscribed to this channel with all notifications turned on. That's right, everybody. Uh, hope hope everything's all right. And of course, let's get 150 likes or 100 likes on this video. Uh, that would be cool. So I wanted to share this article from Brian Middleton about DoorDash. DoorDash is hiking customer fees to pay for a law it helped write. In the months since a coalition of app-based gig companies successfully passed Proposition 22 in California, exempting themselves from reclassifying their workers as employees, DoorDash has been silently passing costs onto, con onto consumers. The company funded Yes on Prop 22 campaign claimed that not passing the ballot initiative would result in higher prices for consumers. And in early December... News first broke that gig companies would be charging more anyway to cover the costs of benefits promised in Prop 22, such as health care and a minimum pay guarantee. It's also not clear whether these new benefits warrant price hikes as an October 2019 study by the Berkeley Labor Center of Proposition 22 found that driver pay would come out to about 564 an hour. Nonetheless, companies in the coalition signaled they'd have to pass costs onto consumers instead of absorbing them into their already unprofitable enterprises. Uh, now, DoorDash is raising its service fee to 15% in California, which, according to an in app description, helps us operate DoorDash and provide a minimum pay guarantee to California Dashers. Service fees are, according to DoorDash, also calibrated by market demand and motherboard has seen receipts where the service fee jumped as high as 21%. You guys still with me? Uh, a DoorDash spokesperson told Motherboard that the company is raising fee percentages for orders in California to cover Prop 22 and is keeping a close eye on the impact of these various price hikes and fee increases, adjusting them when necessary. It's important to remember, however, that for DoorDash and other companies, that usually means when a policy is affecting the gig economy schemes to realize previously illegal profits. Recently, DoorDash has been experimenting with how to respond to the wave of governments nationwide, placing caps on the fees that third-party delivery services change restaurants, or charge restaurants, excuse me. DoorDash has already introduced additional fees for customers in Denver and Chicago and abandoned plans to hike fees for Washington, D.C. restaurants using Dash Pass, but has silently introduced new fees in California to offset commission caps introduced by regulators. DoorDash has also, also has a history of passing the cost of regulation onto customers. In November, San Mateo County introduced a 15% commission cap, which DoorDash responded to with a $2 San Mateo County fee. In September, Fresno's City Council introduced a 15% cap to help restaurants struggling during the pandemic, leading to DoorDash adding a $1 Fresno fee on orders in the city. A more general uh, $1.50 surcharge titled Regulatory Response Fee appears, some, appears elsewhere, both in California cities like San Jose and Mountain View, but also cities in Oregon and Washington, the latter of which is home to the only statewide cap. Each of these fees offer largely identical in-app descriptions explaining they allow DoorDash to continue to offer you, you convenient delivery while ensuring that dashes are active and earning. The fees, however, don't ensure food delivery remains convenient so much as they ensure DoorDash can subsidize the prices. DoorDash's enterprise is an unprofitable and unsustainable one. It offered convenient delivery before going public because it was flush in venture capital, capital and will offer convenient delivery now because its IPO raised billions more in investor capital despite never turning a profit. Now that it is facing the possibility of more caps and regulatory action, it appears DoorDash was right when it warned investors that its business model, specifically its pay model, 
or investment risks. If, regulator, if regulators reduce its ability to minimize labor costs and raise revenues from restaurants and delivery drivers, DoorDash and other affected gig companies will be forced to increasingly hike fees on consumers and risk losing them to competitors or traditional restaurant delivery options. So, this is both a good thing and a bad thing. Good, I guess, because I feel like the customers need to cough up a few extra dollars every now and then, especially if it benefits the driver. Um, but like it said in the last paragraph, and I'll have this link down below, um, it may force consumers or customers to go to other apps, you know, uh, because, you know, there are other options, Grubhub, Uber Eats, you know, and, you know, a lot of the 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 smaller ones also not to mention that restaurants have been creating their own apps you know to uh, get away from all of these fees that they have to pay you know that 25 30 percent fee kind of a thing you know so i don't know i'm on the fence with all of this i don't know where it could go it could go one of both one of either way you know so let me know in the comments section what you guys think about it do you think that this is a good thing that they're hiking the customer fees to pay for a law to help to write or do you think do you think it's a good thing do you think it's a bad thing let me know down below in the comments section. And of course, I do want to take this time to thank all of our patrons over at patreon.com slash pay to drive, especially Millard Norton, our ultimate driver at $100 per month. And of course, Kimberly Thomas and Tulsa Todd, Heidi Barnes, Brian Pomeroy, William Boudreau, Fernando Carranza, Justin Case, uh, Sarah Keston, Alan G. Van Horn, Scott Freisner, Drew Hanor, Stephen Neely, Frank Haviland, Jason Casta, Sherry Cassidy, John Bonacci, Terry DeLong, Anthony Bliss, Nick G, Ginny Thomas, Matt Epperson, and Terrence Pacheco. Thank you to all of you for supporting the channel. If you would like to support the channel on Patreon, links down below in the pinned top comment and in the description. And uh, also, guys, please sign up on the Get Upside Gas app. Comment 333 if you're on there, 444 if you're not yet. Pump your gas, print out your receipt, take a picture of your receipt with the Get Upside Gas app. And within 48 hours or so, you'll get anywhere from 15 cents to 45 cents a gallon back, which is pretty fantastic. And if a friend or family member signs up using your code, you'll get paid every time they pump gas. It's called Get Upside. Links in the description. Make sure to download it. And of course, check out PayToDriveStore.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and all that good stuff. Everything is on sale right now. Link down below. And that's basically it. That's all I got for you on this one. Uh, I'm not really feeling too hot, so that's why I'm kind of, you know, in slow motion today. But if you could, just a friendly reminder, please hit that like button down below if you deliver in this gig economy. And also, if you deliver in this gig economy, hit the red subscribe button down below. And to the right, it has the little notification bell. Turn it on so you don't miss any of these uh, updates. And that's it. If you made it to the end, comment end 624 and 624 and get that money, get that honey, keep hustling, keep bustling. And we'll see you guys next time right here on Pay to Drive and Pay to Drive Vlogs. Take care, everybody. Later.